Hello, everybody. Dr. Rick Wallace dropping in on you. I hope everybody's having an unbelievable day. I apologize that it's been a moment since um, I've checked in. Uh, there's a lot going on project wise. There are some things I'm getting in place so that I can better present, uh, that I can provide more meaningful and free content uh, for those who want to consume it. Also, uh, to be able to better uh, serve people with those paid programs, services, and products that we do offer. Uh, so it's been a lot of work going on in the background. But I did want to take time to get back into the swing of things and get things going. Uh, I'm excited. We're going to kick off uh, theme theme uh, theme day um, start, uh, again starting next week where each day will have a, a, a consecutive theme. In other words, Mondays will be dedicated to uh, finances and money. We're going to call it Money Mondays and we'll move on with, um, you know, different days. And I'm going to release that uh, probably Saturday to let you know which days we're going to focus on what things. And we're going to go deep into it. And I'm excited about it. I haven't done that in a while. Uh, but today I want to talk to you about something real simple. Uh, the power of choice. If there's one true forceful singular thing that you have 100% control of in your life is choice. You don't get to determine the circumstances of life. Um, you don't get to choose every disruption or whether you're going to have a disruption. You don't get to choose how other people will treat you. you. There are so many things that are completely out of your control, but the one thing that you do have in your control is choice and that when you understand the power of choice and the things you are able to choose you realize that you still have absolute control over your ultimate outcomes no you don't get to choose every move and every turn and crick and crevice of your journey but you do get to choose the destination you do get to choose what you will ultimately produce in this life and it comes by the choices you make no you are not going to get uh, a situation where you get to have complete comfort. You're not going to get a situation where there are no disruptions, there are no delays, there are no disappointments, there's no frustrations, there are no people talking behind your back, there are no people literally plotting your demise. That simply is not life. There are some people that don't like you and they're going to do everything they can to disrupt what you're doing. There are going to be some people who may feel they love you but can't possibly see you make it and th they not. Or you, you're going to have situations where people are simply going to be an obstacle in your way. Situations are going to produce challenges. That is life. So how do we deal with things like that? We deal with it by the choices we make. That's the beautiful thing about life. I have a choice. I don't have a choice of what I come into, but I do have a choice of how I respond to it. I do have a choice. And those choices can be broken down in three days. The first thing is what I choose to focus on. Too many of you are focusing on the negative. Too many of you are focusing on the things you can't control. Too many people are focusing on the negative side of the total uh, the total panoramic view of the, uh, of the picture of the moment that you're sitting in. At that moment, what does that mean? That means that you've, choose, you, you've just made a, a, a conscious or subconscious decision that you're going to focus on the negative. Here's the problem. Whatever you focus on, you feel. Whatever you play your, place your focus on is going to have a massive impact on how you feel spiritually, emotionally, psychologically, and physically. It's going to literally change your mood or impact your mood, impact your attitude, impact your expectations. It's going to impact your thinking. You've got to be very careful what you choose to focus on. I choose to focus on the positive. I choose to, and there's always a positive, but, but no, there's not always a positive. Not, what if this happens? What if that happens? You have a positive in the sense that I have a choice on how I'm going to respond. That's my first positive. I don't have to respond to this negative. I don't actually have to respond to it immediately if I don't see the best way to respond. I literally reserve my right 
to hold my peace until I gather my thoughts because sometimes something can be so emphatic or traumatic that it puts you in fight or flight mode. It shuts down the prefrontal cortex, your executive functioning part of your brain, and I can't make good decisions. Why? Because the the, uh, the part of the, this part of the brain takes 30% of my blood flow at any given time when it's active. And if and in, in fight or flight mode, that blood flow is redirected to my extremities so that I can either fight or run. It's a primitive response that doesn't always serve us well in intense moments because the things that used to be there when this reptilian and ancient part of the brain was, was, was primarily developed isn't there anymore. We don't literally walk out in most situations and be at immediate threat. There are no lions, tigers, saber tooth tigers, whatever else out there that threaten us immediately. Some of us live in communities and situations where we still have to be on alert, but for the most part, you're not walking out and immediately in a threat where you've got to either fight or run, but the body still responds the same way to fight or flight. It's going to take all of your blood flow and send it to your extremities so that you have the, it's going to release cortisol and adrenaline into your bloodstream. All of these things at a moment when you need them are great, but when you don't need them and they're consistent and, 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 and consecutive, it creates a problem. It even causes physical health issues. So I don't want to get too far off of it, but you have to understand. So I immediately, first and foremost, have a choice of what I'm going to focus on. Then the next choice that I have is how I interpret it. Do I interpret it through a lens of, oh, my God, why me? Oh, my God, here we go again. Oh, my God, can't win for losing. Or do I look at through a lens of next up, next challenge up, next challenge up? I'm built for this. I'm built for this, so this challenge will only make me stronger. I'm built for this, so this challenge will elevate me. I'm built for this, so it can't, this challenge won't break me. I'm built for this, so this challenge will empower me. It's no way that I come out of the storm the same way I went in. I'm ready for this. I'm built for this. I didn't ask for it, but I'm built for it. That's my interpretation of every challenge I go into. It can't break me because I'm built for it. That is a choice. I literally choose to face it and give it meaning based off of the fact that it's there to strengthen me, to prepare me, to empower me, to drive my focus, to get me to a place where I'm ready to do the things that are necessary to take me to the next level. It's about intentional growth. And in the situation of intentional growth, I must be prepared to move into places that are uncomfortable so that I am enriched in those areas and grow stronger. See, we have gotten, we, 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 we've become a generation of wimps. We've become a generation of soft people. We've become a generation of people who want the prize without the process. We want all the things we see in life that other people have, but we don't want to put in the work. We don't want to make the sacrifice. We don't want to go through the difficulty. We don't want to stand up and face it. But when you interpret it and you sit up and say, I'm built for this. Finally. After I decide what, what, after I make a choice of what I'm going to focus on, and after I make a choice on how I am going to interpret it, then I make a choice on what I'm going to do about it. And that choice is going to have a direct impact on the outcome of that situation and ultimately in the outcome of my life. I can choose to approach it from the position of finding a solution, or I can choose to approach it as a victim. I can decide, oh, whoa, it's me, or I can decide, let's go make it happen. I tell people all the time, it's not that I'm, I, it, it, it's not that I'm the smartest person in the room. It's not that I have all the answers. It's not that I know all the people. It's not that oh, what is it? What is it then? It's simply that I'm going to make it happen or I'm going to die trying. What what it, it's already happened now. You can't change that it happened. You can't wish it away. So then the question becomes simply what are you going to do about it? 
Are you going to whine and complain? Are you going to blame and point fingers? Are you going to sit there and just go, oh, are you going to sit up and say, I can make a difference? I can do something about it. I can stand up and I can walk through this. I can come out on the other side of fear. I can come out on the other side of heartache. I can come out on the other side of pain. I can come out on the other side of frustration. I can come out on the other side of delay. Hell, delay doesn't mean denial. Do you know how many people are sitting in a position of failure right now because they didn't know how close they were to succeeding? When they quit, have I have I made a path for me in the world of intellectualism and academia? Absolutely. But that's not why I'm successful. That's just me playing around with my success. That's just me saying, what can you do next, mister? That's me saying, but you know what it is? I'm going to tell you something. It's just my mindset. My mindset, if I decide I want it, I'm going to have it. I don't care what it is. I don't care if I don't own a, a, a level of expertise in it now, but I will. I don't care if I've never walked in it before. I will. Let me let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something here. Your attitude will always have a greater impact on your success than your IQ. How you think and how you, your psychology is 80% of your success. How you start your day, your state of mind, the mood you're constantly in. Do you see everything as a problem or a puzzle? There's a difference. Problems frustrate. Puzzles are meant to be solved. How do you see it? That's that interpretation thing I was talking about. See, if I interpret it as a pot, one of the things I do in, in prayer and meditation every morning, one of the things I do is I end a part of my meditation by saying that, um, that the obstacles and, 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 and disruptions in my life are what? Only an illusion. There can be no obstacles on a, 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 a disruptions in my life. Or to the mind of God and the mind of God is in me around me and it serves me now I'm never at a point where I don't have a solution because the mind of God flows through me God the mind of God is never stumped at anything and if I'm connected then I have access to the mind of God I simply have to slow down and apply myself with what's readily available and that's the answer there's an answer to everything. There's never a problem you're going to face that there's no solution to. The problem with most people is they give more power to the problem than the solution. The problem becomes so big that it becomes intimidating. Once it becomes intimidating, it shuts them down. They start looking for a place to retreat to. That's why no matter where I go, that I've spoken before when I introduce and I'm walking up on stage, I can hear shouts in the audience saying no surrender, no retreat, because it's a part of my message. We don't surrender. We don't retreat. We don't quit. We don't turn around. There's no pleasure in retreating. There's no pleasure in surrendering. There's no pleasure in turning around, pressing on, pushing through, standing up. Did I say one time it was easy? No. Like Will Smith said, God put everything worth having on the other side of fear. I would add pain. If you ain't going through fear and pain, you ain't got the best that life has to offer. Not that it's about suffering, but there's a part of you that's got to invest in you at a level that most people aren't willing to have in order you for you to get the things you need. Hey, Kiana, which quote are you speaking of? I'm moving at 100 miles an hour. You, I don't. I want to make sure. Can you type which quote you want me to restate? And I'll definitely restate it for you. Uh, look, this thing is really up to you. No, you don't control the circumstances and the situations. You do control how you respond to them. And your response is going to be indicative of what you 
receive and what you achieve and what you experience. On, on the other side of fear, on the other side of pain, is everything you have. So what does it mean? You're not going to get it in your corner of comfort. You're not going to get it pointing fingers of blame. You're not going to get it with an old woe is me. Look what life has done to me. Victim mentality. You're going to have to stand up. You're going to have to square your shoulders. You're going to have to make up in your mind that no matter what happens, I'm going to finish what I started. No matter what happens, I'm going to move through this thing. No matter what happens, I'm going to raise the level of my performance by being committed to being better today than I was yesterday. That's my goal, to grow every day. I don't want to go to sleep the same man that woke up. I, I don't want to waste my 86,400 seconds on emptiness. No more zero days has been my battle cry. No more days where there's nothing accomplished. No more days where there's no progress made. No more days where there's absolutely no gain. There can be no zero gains in my life from this day forward. Every day, there's got to be something I'm doing that makes me just a little bit better. There's got to be that thing. I, I think I know what you're talking about, uh, Kiana, but... If you're talking about my 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 my, my um, ending of my morning prayer meditation, uh, the last last stanza of my spoken affirmation is that I enjoy life. Each day brings a constant demonstration of the power and the wonder of God in my life. I am uh, committed to excellence. I am adequately sufficient to meet every challenge. I am powerful beyond measure. The, no obstacle or undesirable circumstance in my life is accepted. It is nothing but an illusion because there can be no obstacle or undesirable circumstance in my, to the mind of God, which is in me and around me and serves me now. Um, and that's every day. That's the end. That can be no obstacle an undesirable circumstance to the mind of God, which is in me and around me and serves me now. So that tells me that anything that I see as an obstacle or undesirable circumstance is just an illusion. Why? Because I have access to the solution. One of the things that when, when talking to my wife and or listening to her talk to other people about me, and what she has commended to me directly face to face is that while I possess a number of different characteristics that, you know, she's attracted to, uh, the thing that she appreciates the most about me is the calmness at which I deal with adversity. And she admits that when she first saw that in me, she saw it as d disconcerned or maybe d uh, not being concerned or maybe even denial. But what she come to learn is I'm keenly cognizant of every situation and thing that goes on in my life and for those I love. I know what's happening, but I will never become frenetic and unglued because of a situation because of a circumstance, because I understand it's illusion. Why? Because I'm connected to a God that has a mind that holds the answers to every situation that I'm ever going to face. And that that answer is always moving towards me. It may not arrive at the moment I want it to, but it comes at the time that I'm best capable of applying it and using it and getting optimal results. And so I don't become frenetic and unglued. I don't become uneasy. I don't lose it. I don't let my heart rate get to raising. I maintain a level of control that allows my mind to receive, my spirit and my heart to receive the answer. I'm not talking about religion here. 
I'm talking about a direct divine connection between you and the creator that's not filtered through anybody else's observations and dictations and definitions about it. It's you and in, 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 in the almighty one-on-one -on -one, direct relationship. When you don't have that, that there's a level of uncertainty. I normally use the analogy when I'm trying to teach people about the importance of personal relationship and connectivity with the divine. I'm, I, I, I say, you know, Everybody talks about and prays to God. Most of the time, first and foremost, most people pray in an unnatural way. Who do you hold conversations with and have a good communication relationship with that you're the only one talking? I ask, I ask people all the time, I say, how's your prayer life? And I don't mean that in a religious sense. So the first thing we got to get understanding, I'm not talking about the way you were taught to pray. I'm talking about your prayer life, that real true communion with you and God. And I say, how it goes? Talk to me. Tell me about how, how your prayer life goes. How do you start the conversation? What's, what is it about? And I know I'm a little bit off now, but I want to share something. It's a little bit out. And, and, and they go, when I start like that, I'm like, okay, okay. And then and then what? And, and they go on. And so we 10 minutes into the prayer. I'm, and I say, hold on. Stop, 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 stop. At what point do you listen? How can you hear when you're constantly talking? How much sense does it make that the vast majority of your prayer is telling someone who already knows what's going on? Sometimes you need to check your levels, your energy levels, because the higher hertz frequency you're on, the closer you are to being able to hear. And I don't mean audibly. I mean on a spiritual level where it's even more clear. You can't hear because you're not on that level. You're, you're praying from a place of desperation and fear. You're at 200 hertz. You're down there with all that other negative stuff. Fear is a part of negativity. Anxiety is a part of ne negativity. In no matter what relation, no matter, even in religion, no matter what religion you're talking, when you look at sacred scripture, you find out anxiety is not welcome. Anxiety isn't a behavior of the faith. I, I, I believe it was Paul that said, be anxious for nothing, but everything in prayer and supplication, make your request known unto God. And, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will what? Guard your hearts and minds. Hearts and minds is your, your, your consciousness and your subconscious. The mind is the consciousness. The heart is the subconscious, the seat of your soul. The very thing that controls 96% of your behavior is your heart, your subconscious. And what happens? Says the peace of God which surpasses all understanding. It's not even something that you can rationally and reasonably comprehend, but it will guard you. What but what you got to do? You can't be anxious. It's literally telling you about the physiological explanation of why you can't think when you're desperate, why you can't think when you're in fear. But that anxiousness robs your prefrontal cortex, that part that can receive and process, and you're in fight and flight. What you're fighting? What you're running from, it just needs you to make a decision. It just needs you to make a choice. Ain't nothing to fight. Ain't nothing to run. From. Some of you are swinging at the air because you're too frenetic and unglued by situations. So learn how to communicate from a place of peace and, and anticipation. Every time I run into a challenge, I'm like, okay, something big is about to happen. People don't, people don't accuse me of being in denial more than you would imagine. Why? Because I'm smiling? How are you smiling? Well, first and foremost, let me tell you something. I've learned how to live in the future. I'm not escaping the present. I'm learning how to live in the future. You know what? When you can sit up and you can project what your current decisions that you're making now will produce for you in the future. You can see what making the right choices and making the right moves are going to produce for you down the road. And you can literally project yourself into that reality, feel the emotion, feel the experience, get the scent of what it smells like, tastes like, and feel like. It will calm the moment because now, 
I'm not, I tell people all the time, I'm operating in the present, but I'm living in my destiny. I'm living in what I see three years from now. I'm living in that. Why am I smiling? Because I see this present moment is only going to produce something greater down the line. And I'm just sitting there enjoying it. It's not escapism. It's an ability to see beyond the moment. Some of you are so trapped in the moment that you can't possibly see anything but fear. Hey, it's called a moment for a reason. It's not permanent. You got to be able to get beyond the moment and see what's out there at a different level. I'm talking about raise your level of expectation, anticipation, and be able to move in a way that you move. I am wishing you all the best. I'm going to do everything I can to bring you as much uh, empowering and relevant content as I can. Things that are going to touch on some of the things that people are facing in life on an everyday basis. Some ways to deal with it and confront it that you can just sit down and consume at no cost to you. Yes, I love to work with people. And yes, they pay me well to do it. And no, I'm not cheap but I have a like, like a 99.98% success rate. Matter of fact, everyone who has ever completed a program with me has uh, rated the program as successful. The only ones are the ones that have uh, not completed it. And that are fewer in, but very few. And they've never said it wasn't successful. They just didn't complete it. I know what I'm doing, but I'm going to get you some things that you can consume that don't cost you anything because I want you to have something to fight with. Those of you that decide you wanna work with me, reach out to me. Um, there, are some, uh, there are some resources in the uh, description box. Uh, you can reach out to my support team at the uh, address that I'm typing in the chat for those that are gonna be able to get, get, get the chat, uh, but you should definitely be able to reach me. And there we go. It's out there now. Look, it's your, uh, it's, it's your choice. You don't get to choose your circumstances, but you do get to choose how you respond. And how you respond is going to have a direct impact on the outcome. It's that simple. Now, there are ways to train yourself to respond properly to stop yourself from going into fight or flight mode or to rescue your, rescue yourself from fight, fight or flight mode. Uh, I teach that. But what you cannot do is consistently allow yourself to be triggered and putting yourself in a situation where you can't properly respond. On that note, I'm gonna get ready to get out here. As I always say, I live my life on full so that I die on E. I challenge you to do the same thing. Don't leave any potential untouched when you leave this world. My, my, on, 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 on my memorial, because I've already told my family I don't want that old traditional thing, cremate me. Save the money, cremate me. But whatever memorial you put up with my name on it, just put I came, I saw, I conquered. And then let the life that I live speak for me. And I'm going to be fine with that. That should be what you, where you're at. However you want to be remembered as you. But you should be able to say, I can let the life that I live speak for me. The life that I live has, be, has become my legacy. And on that note, I'm out of here. You guys have an unbelievable day. And we will talk soon. I'm asking now as we push a fundraiser that you support what the Odyssey Project is doing in the inner cities, uh, especially with programs like Black Men Lead, which is a rite of passage uh, initiative, and Restoring Ghetto for, Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters, which is a program focused on helping young girls, but boys as well, suffering from childhood sexual abuse, uh, rape, molestation, domestic abuse, uh, absentee fatherhood and so many other things uh, the information will be in the box Thank you.
Thank <laughs> you.